<clears throat> Good morning and welcome to Mindful Mornings at Sunrise. And today joining me is a dear friend of mine, Valerie Wanamaker. How are you doing, Valerie? I'm good. It's good to see you, Tracy. Yeah. And where are the where in the world are you? Um, I am in Asheville, North Carolina. Asheville, one of my favorite places in the world. And that's where we met, actually, right? Valerie yes. and I were wilderness therapy field guides together back in the day. We had the same boots, the same backpack, and the same side braid. <laughs> we did have the same side braid on the same side. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Seuss of the Carolinas. Shout out to Seuss of the Carolinas. Mm-hmm. But what are you doing now, Val? You're not a field guide anymore. I am not. Yes, those days are behind me. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah, I actually, I have a private practice now that I started last February. So like right before the pandemic kicked in. So I've been doing telehealth pretty much for the entirety of it, which has worked out better than I thought that it would. Um, but yeah, so my nice. private practice, I kind of focus on working with uh, individuals and like relationships, so couples or other relationship structures, polyamorous folks, or people who practice like relationship anarchy, um, ethical non-monogamy, and kind of focusing on intimacy, relationships, and sex and sexuality. Wow, that is an interesting focus. And the reason why you're with us this week, because it's the week leading up to Valentine's Day, right? Mm -hmm. Um, How did you get into that area of expertise? Um, That's a great question. It actually took me a little bit to find that uh, for myself, because I had worked so much like all through my 20s and into my 30s, mostly with kids and adolescents. Um, And when I went back to graduate school and got my master's and started working as a clinician, I was still working with that age population and just was having a really hard time. Like I kind of like lost my enthusiasm for it. And so part of how I ended up here is I spent like a year just kind of noticing what am I naturally drawn to? What are my interests? What are the books that I want to read? What are the things I want to learn more about? And all of it was related to Uh, relationships and sex. So I was like, oh, that's what I'll do. And since then, it's just been like a really beautiful transition because I didn't realize like I had brought all this knowledge of um, information with me that I'd been kind of researching and, you know, trying to understand within myself and the background all over the years. And so kind of bringing that in and then being able to kind of um, gain more practical know-how through other trainings. And um, I've I've practiced primarily with couples um, through emotionally focused couples therapy. So that's been a really big um, influence and orientation to the work that I do. So it's fun. Interesting. I really enjoy it. So when we work together in the wilderness field, we usually work with adolescent girls. um, And it was such a prominent topic with that age group and what they've been through and what, what they will be going through when they enter enter back into the world again. Um, And it's something that we talk about at Sunrise RTC too. And we have a a healthy sexuality group for the girls to really get to know what a healthy relationship in terms of sexuality looks like. Mm -hmm. Um, So leading up to our our Valentine's Day week and and think of Valentine's Day as you will, a Hallmark uh, holiday or whatnot, but it's also nice to focus on relationships on the people you love, your self-love. So here's my question, Val, are you ready? Yes. (laughs) (laughs) How can we ensure that we're in a healthy sexual relationship with not only our partners, but ourselves as well? Do you have an answer to that? I think really it's like this, the starting with self, right? Because so, you know, we're all raised in a culture that's pretty highly repressed and also sexuality is highly exploited. And Um, Many of us are given some pretty explicit messages about what sex and sexuality looks like based on our gender. And then for those of us who don't subscribe to the gender binary, then we're given no messages or messages that are based in deviance. Um, So it's almost like having to start like start over or like clean say, or even just like acknowledging like what are the messages that I internalized about my own sexuality and what Um, it's supposed to look like, what it's supposed to feel like, how I'm supposed to engage with it, who it's for, what it's about. Um, Like, like really just like uh, acknowledging those messages. Cause I think so many of us walk around with that in our head and then it kind of embeds in our bodies and our systems. And then it shows up as like sexual um, shame as fear, Mm -hmm. right? We want to hide parts of ourselves. We feel too much or too big or not enough. And all of that kind of gets tangled into our sexual template in a way 
Um, and no, no wonder it's such a taboo topic, right? We're all carried around all of this. Like, we don't know what to think about sexuality because we're giving, we're given so many different sides of the aspect. And then we have our biology within us as well, telling us something different. Mm -hmm. Um, so yeah, I, Valerie and I, in talking about this topic discussed like, well, what can we say? What can't we say? And even that in itself is like, why do we have to talk about it like that? Um, and why can't we be, why is there such a taboo on it? That's interesting. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And whenever I do conversations like this with people, that's going to be like, um, presented as material or as content. One of the questions I always ask, okay, like, yeah, like, what can I say? What words can I use? Right? Like, can I actually say things like penetration? Can I talk about specific genitals? Am I allowed to like, what words can I say? What can I not like, like, how is this conversation? Um, like, how open can it be? Or how kind of confined or structured or safe do we need to keep it? Um, mm -hmm. And I should actually say, safe, right? <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. So in, in terms of defining, you said relearning our sexuality because we have the shame or the lack of knowledge or um, all of these preconceived notions around it. So where would you as an expert say one should start when reevaluating and redefining their own sense of sexuality? Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's a great question. I mean, I think that I feel like there's a couple like maybe core pieces in that where to start might be different for everyone. So for some people, it might be important to start with the messages piece and kind of um, evaluate that part and kind of look at like, well, what are the things that I believe about my own sexuality and, and then kind of growing from there and like, what do I want to correct? Others, it might be um, more accessible to go into uh, like education, right? Sex positive education that's really going to be beyond just reproductive health and STIs and STDs. Um, and looking at like, okay, like what are my what are my parts? How do they work? What part of their natural functioning um, do I know about? What are the questions that I have? I mean, so many of us don't really know how our own bodies work and then how the bodies of our partners work, you know, especially if like the only thing that we've learned about our sexual anatomy is based in reproductive health. Um, so mm -hmm. that's an important piece too, because sometimes the shame and the fear comes from rejecting parts of our own function, functioning or parts of our own body that are actually really natural, healthy and okay. And that there is so much deviance or not deviance, deviance, Diver there's so much diversity, right? Of like, of, of, of genital diversity, like penises, vulvas, and then even folks who have more like intersex uh, genitals, like that there's so much variety and that the variety is normal. Um, but many of us have an idea of what it, of what our parts are supposed to look like. Um, and that that alone can create a lot of sexual shame and fear. So, you know, really accepting our bodies, getting to know our bodies um, and being in relationship with our bodies is also a really important part. Um, so it sounds like um, in order to have a healthy and positive sexuality with somebody else, it starts from within, just like, just like self-confidence, just like self-love, just like all of that. Like it always starts with a, an internal positive relationship with self and then you can give outwardly, right? So leading up to Valentine's Day, how does our audience have this conversation with their partner? Is there a box of candy that's like, here's what I want tonight? <laughs> I don't think so, especially in our society. So where do we go from there? Yeah. Um, I would say that, again, it's like coming back to home base. It's like, I have to know what I like and what I want. And also like, I need to know my yes. I need to know my no. And I need to know my like, mm, maybe like, oh, I'm kind of curious about that. Um, and, and bringing that to the table, like having more open communication about sex with our partners, um, getting like being really curious about what they like, what they don't like. Um, and, and that can, that doesn't have to do just with sexual acts, but it's also like, how do I want to feel? Right? Like, how do I want to feel in this experience? Or um, what about in my environment needs to be a certain way before I feel relaxed enough or safe enough or comfortable enough? Um, 
in order to engage with someone sexually in order to have a sexual experience. So there's, there's all these like different parts that kind of go into it. And we often think that like, we think of sex as like the solitary act, but there's really so much. And the other thing too, I would say is um, that our, our own relationship with sexuality is, is unique to us and to not expect our partner to have the same kind of, you know, template to want the same things, to approach it the same way. Um, and that if they don't, that there's something wrong with them or with us, right? That our sexuality is, is unique. And that part of having a healthy sexual relationship with someone is, is creating dialogue around that, around that, having conversation around it. And then like negotiating, like how can we both have our needs met? How can we both experience pleasure and feel comfort and feel safe and feel whatever else we want to feel like? Some people like to feel a little bit scared or like dominated or, you know, like there's all these different like feeling states sometimes that can be really pleasurable and enjoyable in a sexual experience. Um, but it's, it's helpful if we know what that is and what we're asking for in that versus um, trying to mind read or want our most of us want our partners to read our mind right we don't want to have to ask for it because asking for it then it's like it's going to bring up shame or fear or other or sometimes it's just like i don't want to have to like it's going to feel like more spontaneous or romantic if my partner just knows what i want it's like that's a myth well, that's <laughs> what we see in the movies right yeah. they always know and it's always the most romantic scene i remember as a young woman i think i don't think i was engaged yet but I was leading up to that with with my ex-husband um, and I got a shape magazine which is where young women all young women find their sexuality is through the magazines right um, and it was an article I don't remember who by but she was like ladies light your own damn candles if you want to come home to a candlelit dinner make it happen on your own people can't read your minds and I think that is a huge one. And it takes so much vulnerability to be like, excuse me, I, this is what I would like. It would make me really happy if we would do this. Um, and then vice versa, how do you, how do you draw that out of your partner? Mm -hmm. I don't know if you know the answer to that. Do you, <laughs> <laughs> we all need to know. <laughs> yeah. Well, that, I think that's a really good question because um, I would say that it's kind of even going back to some of like the, the Gottman Institute is really big on like, how do we create change in our relationships? How do we create change in our partner? Um, and like the greatest way that we can have influence is through changing ourselves, right? So, and um, being really mindful of my response. So if I ask my partner a question about sex or ask them what they want and they give me kind of like a curt answer or they shut it down or they appear nervous, then like for me to be, um, really mindful of responding to that thoughtfully and being curious about that reactivity. Like, where is that coming from them? Creating more space, creating more safety, creating more comfort um, and allowing it to take time. Because mm -hmm. if I have a big change or, you know, overnight or in therapy or whatever it might be, and now I'm feeling more empowered to talk about sexuality, but my partner's not, it can feel like a lot to come at someone and try to like pull everything out of them. And what we often find is that people don't know you know, like when I, when I work with couples like that are, you know, well into their sixties, sometimes like one or both of them actually has never really been, um, asked like, what is it that, what is it that you want? What do you like? You know, or if they've been asked, they've never been able to come up with answers. So they give an answer of what they, what they think, you know, their partner wants them mm -hmm. to say, you know, or what they're supposed to want. Yeah. So, and that goes back the full circle, right. Of, of knowing yourself and what you need first and foremost. Mm -hmm. um, and again, this comes up in all aspects of relationships, not just in sexuality or, or even emotion, right? It's, I'm tired and I don't wanna wash the dishes tonight. Can someone else do it? <laughs> that kind of thing. Yeah, yeah, asking for what you need because you know what you, only you know what you need, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, exactly. And, and I would say too, when we're talking about like, um, when we're talking about sex, when we're having these conversations, especially when they're new, um, to, to be tender with it, to be, uh, you know, not that we have to be scared, but that, um, 
to, to just create a lot of space for it and to keep coming back to it just because my partner doesn't know now, or if I don't know now, doesn't mean that I need to give up and go back to the old script, you know, but to just continue to be curious and um, engage with what comes up along the way. Cause that's, there's probably more than likely, I mean, many of us have a lot of stuff we have to process along with it and to kind of get rid of the old narratives before we're able to kind of adopt some new ones. Um, and not that those have to be mutually exclusive, they can happen at the same time, but yeah, yeah being patient with that. So I feel like this is a topic that we could go on and on about for days and, and yes. on all different levels. Um, but from the, the content that we've already discussed, what do you think is most important for our audience today to take away from this conversation? I would say the most important thing probably is that if you have never been genuinely curious about your own sexuality and what it means to you and what you get out of it um, or what your relationship is to it, then that's a good question to ask and to bring some curiosity to it. Um, because sexuality ultimately, um, it's, it's, it's part of our humanity and it doesn't mean that it has to be any one way. There are a lot of different ways that people orient to their sexuality and are in relationship with it. Um, but that we're going to have the best relationship with it when we're actually actively engaging with it, asking ourselves questions and accepting what those answers are for us and also creating space for it to change over time, right? Because we're always mm. changing, you know, that's part of life is like life is change. And what might've been true for me about my sexuality when I was 16 is gonna be different at 20 and at 30 and at 45 and at 46, you know, like it changes all the time. I hope so. so. that to be true. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and what we need changes with it, like all of that. So, so um, being curious, being open, not being afraid to ask ourselves questions, creating conversation with others, uh, making lots of space for the diversity within it. Awesome. Awesome. So Valerie, thank you so much for being on Mindful Mornings at Sunrise. And if anyone has questions for Valerie, I'm going to put her website um, in the description of this YouTube video. And you can get a hold of her through that website. She also does Enneagram classes. Um, and I'm hoping she'll come back on at some point and talk about the Enneagram with us because that's always really interesting too. But Valerie, thank you so much. Um, is there anything else you want to say? I don't think so. It was great doing this. This was fun. So yeah, I would absolutely love to come back to talk about the Enneagram. That is like one of my big passions too. So let's do it. Let's do it. All right. Happy Valentine's Day, everyone. Go speak your needs. <laughs>